And it's the first time I've actually done an interview with more than one person. So through the course of this interview, inshallah, you'll see the correlation of why I got these two special men here. So my first guest is a man. He's the CEO of Alpha Incorporated. He has an extensive and successful career in the financial sector. He's managed over $20 billion in portfolios. And he's raised enormous amounts of funds for politicians, actors, athletes, small businesses, and even large corporations. This man right here is very important to the culture, very important to financial literacy. He's a billion dollar financial coach. With no further delay, I'd like to introduce Derek Whitehead. Welcome to the show. Nice to be here, brother. Nice Definitely, to be here. Man. Nice to and you already know, this man here is a legend in his own right. Doesn't really need an introduction. He had a very successful career in the NBA from 1998 to 2008. Known amongst his peers as a walking bucket, certified bucket, buccaneer. If you don't like the way life is going, just say bucket. <laughs> you know, my man, straight out of the streets of Philadelphia, legend in his own right, Catino Mobley. My man. My what's man, up, what's man? going on? Man, happy to be here. Man. So y'all already know, we tried to do this before, yeah. you know, but, you know, law is the best to plan this. So now that we finally here, I got so much I want to unpack, so much I want to talk about. So I think off the rip when people see both of y'all together, and based on the introduction, I don't think anybody assuming that Derek played ball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I don't think and nobody's assuming that Katina Moby might be a billionaire. <laughs> but you know, we ain't we ain't, you know, we ain't here to expose whether that's a reality or not. But right. we do want to establish the correlation between y'all two. So, you know, any one of y'all could take the lead, you know, how did y'all meet and what's the, you know, the 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 the, the virtue of y'all relationship. I really don't know. I forget how we kind of met. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I I do remember when we did, uh, it was Kendrick Spirits, and we were on the phone for hours, uh, hours. just talking about life and philosophy philosophy of life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm big on that. He's big on that. And um, just mentoring me, especially through my tough times of um, um, going through this trial, um, mentally, physically, and emotionally, um, of of uh, with my children okay. and um, uh, fighting for custody at that time, mm -hmm. and um, this um, you know we all go through it at times where this is imposter syndrome of life, yeah. where you think you are either not good enough or these different things, and uh, the transition from uh, you know being a, a a ball player to actually being a father, a stay at home dad, and then um, uh, trying to be an entrepreneur and a businessman at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a certain amount of discipline that you have to have, and I wasn't going. I wasn't doing that as far as finance, and uh, Derek was helping me kind of understand how the finance world works. Uh, but at that time, it even you know now, and I'm trying to get to be my best at it, mm -hmm. where I'm trying to juggle so many things yeah. at one time, and I think all of us in life go through that. So Derek's been helping me. Um, kind of manage that part of the life and become a professional at that, mm -hmm. so I can be able to help my children. Um, so they won't make those mistakes. And if they do, they do. But, you know, you always have that. At least the structure is in place. Exactly. Yeah, as long as exactly. the structure is in place. Right. That, that, yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing that you said that because I believe that that's something that's normal mm -hmm. coming from where we come from. Right. The part you mentioned about just the uh, the mental state yeah. of one telling himself that I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that's also contributed by sometimes, you know, the mothers right. of these right. children. They add Good on time. to it, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and it's not to throw them under the bus like oh, it's just yeah. solely them. I think that as men, real men, mm -hmm. who actually aspire to do the right thing, mm -hmm. we do kind of beat ourselves up. Like, yeah. look, we, I'm in this situation. Did I do everything that I was able to do, you know what I'm saying, to bring about, you know, some structure, some mm -hmm. stability? Mm -hmm. In my child's life. Right. And I think as real men, 
based on whatever is within our capacity, we try to do or maximize whatever that is mm-hmm. to do the right thing. And then some of us, you know, may not have had any prior training mm-hmm. or understanding of what it is to be a father. Yeah. So you find yourself conflicted with the mistakes or errors of your, you know, those that preceded you. Right. And at the same time, looking forward, it's your situation. It's like, where do I get a grasp or a grip on this situation? And then, like I said, you know, sometimes these women, you know, contribute to that. And then the situation could either amount to a person giving up, just running off, leaving the child. It's very big. It's a, it's a yeah. big thing. Uh, yeah. Derek and I speak about this a lot. Um, and uh, you, <laughs> I'm not going to get into it just yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is new. Uh, but uh, you'd be surprised how words can either build you up or tear you down. Absolutely. And especially when you're going through something mentally in your head. Absolutely. Right? And if it's your, the children's mother or whether how she acts or how she, uh, how her love language is towards you and yours towards her, mm-hmm. um, that can either, like I said before, right, help you grow or actually tear you down. Tear you down. Yeah. And uh, in learning that, um, I try my best to go back to, uh, I guess, my basketball ways of life where there has to be a structure to become successful Absolutely. opposed to, like, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, you go in the gym with the rim and the basketball. But then if I can go in the gym with the same rim and basketball, but I have a plan, mm-hmm. right? It's finance. You have to have a plan. Yeah. Right, and then now that plan you build confidence, discipline, and struct you to confidence, discipline, and, and things like that from small habits. Mm-hmm. So, I think when you take that approach, and me taking that approach uh, helps me. It, and you know, it listen, it's less depression is it's you know less anxiety. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 more um, seeing the big picture and things like that. So, Derek helps me with that a lot. You know, um, and I try to help as many people as I can. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I, that's definitely an hour on top of our conversation. <laughs> yeah. But to expound on what he said in regards to financial structure, because coming from, you know, the inner cities of the United States and pretty much around the world, I think many of us focus on being a provider because that's important. Mm-hmm. You know, so financial structure is something that's not really taught in these particular households. You know, you're pretty much like taught to go get it, but not maintain it, not sustain it, how to allocate it, so on and so forth. We're not taught these things. Mm-hmm. We're taught to just go get it yeah. and make sure that we have it when it comes time to provide for those we entrusted with. Right. So from, you know, financial expert. You know, master at wealth creation. I mean, I know these is big titles, but these are things that you've earned, you know what I'm saying, through your career and things that people have ascribed to you. And I'm saying these are, you know, names that you brought up for yourself. So, like, based on what I just said, like, how important is financial structure in a household? Uh, Extremely important. Extremely important. Because if you can't, uh, I mean... You can have all the love in the world. Yeah. But if you wake up hungry, I mean, in the morning, at night, every, everything's fine at night. Mm-hmm. But when you wake up that morning and two stomachs are growling, you can't concentrate on too much. Okay. Every day you have to grow up. You have to, you have to get up. How am I going to pay my bills? Mm-hmm. How am I going to eat? How am I going to take care of my kids? You know, and if, you, if you're a real man, how am I going to take care of my kids comes first. Absolutely. So. That's a fact. So, you know, uh, I didn't have a dad in, uh, around in my life. and uh, But my mom was the the mom and the dad. And a lot of us are like that. But um, but uh, I watched her. I watched her uh, get up, do what she had to do. And um, she taught me discipline, mm-hmm. you know. But one thing she couldn't teach me was something that she didn't know. And that was how to take it, how to, t- you know, be financial financially stable. Mm-hmm. That came way later. Okay. That came way later. 
I mean, that's kind of impossible when you know, you know, just to defend the honor of a lot of single mothers. You know, my grandparents raised me. You know, and my grandmother, she was definitely, you know, the centerpiece of everything in my family. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, she was already enduring responsibilities that wasn't completely hers. So not being able to instill financial literacy in you, how did you acquire that understanding later? Well, actually later, um, my mom's, I remember, you know, my mom used to make lampshades. Wow. Right? For everybody. You know, she'd make these extraordinary lampshades, man. They were like, um, you know, she'd get a regular lampshade and she'd, and she'd put all this uh, fringe around it <laughs> and all this stuff. And and, um, and she'd sell it for like 200 bucks. Wow. She was a hustler then. <laughs> she was a hustler, brother. She was a hustler, brother. Right? And so... I mean, we had to survive, man. And, you know, she did better than survive. You know, I, I yeah. never wanted hungry for anything. Yeah. If I was poor, I didn't know it. Just like a lot of us in the hood, you know, that, you know. Now, we, see, to me, I mean, cut short. That's, yeah. to me, that's parenting. Yeah. Because if hardship, difficulty is something that children are oblivious of in their immediate proximity, we're not talking about the world outside. But if you can create that environment in the home and it becomes a place of refuge, it becomes a place of understanding that this is a, a safe place. This is a place where I know I won't go hungry. I know the lights to stay on. I know if I pop open that refrigerator, it's not going to be two empty shelves. Like, you know, that to me is what I always understood in regards to responsibility of providing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then the love factor, as you mentioned, that becomes easy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That just slides in there organically. It's no, it's it like, because now you have an abundance of time and energy to offer that because the, you know, the immediate threat is out of the way. Definitely. You know, definitely. And, and, and that's definitely what my grandparents provided for me. I didn't, I didn't want for nothing. I didn't need, you know what I'm saying? A lot of my friends, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I had, yeah. I had friends that I sneak a pair, you know, Ask for certain extra stuff, you know. Yeah. And take it to them with the tags on it, you know what I'm saying? So I was always cognizant of what I was fortunate to have. Yeah. And I never allowed it to make me a person who was insensitive to somebody who didn't. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're also taught um, not so much um, how to live free. Mm -hmm at all, we're taught how to survive. Now, there's two different things, yeah. right? Because um, I tell people everywhere, you know, and I've even on my Instagram, I say, you know, money doesn't give you happiness. Mm -hmm. um, listen, it's the next best thing next to oxygen. We understand that yeah. part. But at the end of the day, you can mismanage money. You can't mismanage time and think you're going to be yeah. successful, yeah, right? Exactly. Whether it's with your children, your spouse, you, yourself, mm -hmm. right? So you can lose money. When you lose time, it's, 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 it's a lot more piercing. Absolutely. Derek and I on the way over here was just talking about that and yeah. just men in general. Yeah. Right. And I've never been no female. So I'm not going to sit here and talk about them and how what they go through and what they feel. And yeah, I know as a single mother or, you know, as whatever, I'm a single father. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of different things and I'm not great at them, but my kids know and that I pour my heart into it. Mm -hmm. You know, whether I'm cooking and cleaning, I'm doing this, I'm going here, my daughter, my son's dead. I'm always there mentally, emotionally, physically, I'm there. Um, it's a lot. And it's a lot for moms, too. I understand that. But like yeah. I said before, I'm not that. I'm not a mother. Yeah. I'm a father. Yeah. Right? I'm a parent. Yeah. But, it, you know, it, it gets to that point where, I, for me, I feel good even when I do struggle. Because I'm not making $10 million a year in yeah. basketball no more, $12 million a year. Yeah. I feel good that my children love being around me. I feel good that I can be there for my kids. I feel good that I'm spending that time. Because my son is 14. He was just in Dallas. He, 17, 18, he's going to be with his friends a lot. He's not going to be with me as much. Yeah. I'm just going to peek in there, 
right? My daughter's going to get 14 and 15 and 16 and she's going to be with her friends a lot. Mm -hmm. So you only get a certain amount of time to really give that type of influence. Yeah. And you're, like you were saying earlier, you know, uh, you had your daughter at a younger age. For me, they teach me how to be better. Yeah. Because yeah. if they weren't here, I wouldn't even know if I would do the things that I'm doing Absolutely. because yeah. of them. Absolutely. So they're actually my teacher, Absolutely. right? As yeah. much as I'm teaching them, they are actually my teacher of how to be your best, yeah. right? I mean, when I was younger and I'm not going to act, you know, I, listen, I had different women and have fun and but. You know, you're being reckless. Yeah. yeah. Now you got to... You got to live for somebody <laughs> you gotta else. You got to get your butt home. Yeah. Your daughter may yeah. go crazy on you. You know, like that type of thing. And I see a lot of that in the AAU space where there's amazing fathers. Yeah. Like it's it's a... we, And that's what, you know, what, what my kind of platform is. I want people in the world, not just in the United States, but in the world to understand that men are superheroes. I don't think that people really give precedence to the single father's story. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate because single motherhood is so widespread mm -hmm. and so abundant mm -hmm. that the opposite of that is kind of like, well, it's your turn anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? It's not looked at like, you know, the same dynamic, mm -hmm. the same struggle, the same things are required. Right. It's just required from the other parent. Right. And nobody really delves into that. Because mm -hmm. I think there's a certain just normal insensitivity is just like, like I said, like, well, it's, it's about time. You know we don't appreciate. Like, yeah. just in life in general, think about this. There's the mother who's a stay-at-home mother at one point in time, mm -hmm. and she's doing everything for the children and the husband or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, there's the father who's working, work, leaving early and working late. Just to make sure that everybody's okay. Yeah. yeah. But neither one actually respects what the other one is doing. So then now it's this cultural gender war yeah. of like, well, you don't do this and then you don't do this. And it's like, yeah. yo, both, both jobs are hard. Absolutely. Both jobs are hard. It's like a basketball game. You the one, I'm the two, he's the three, there's the four, and there's the five. The five thinks because he got 15 rebounds, oh, you, I do all this. It's like, why? Well, guess what? I gave you the ball no and question. I did this. Like, we should appreciate each other. It's absolutely. a team, ain't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, then act like it's a team. Stop acting like you by yourself doing this. This absolutely. is not singles tennis or golf. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Well, I think team. that's just how people ha handle adversity. Like, when people f handle adversity, they ultimately think it's exclusive. Right. Like, this is just happening to me. Right, right. It ain't happening to nobody else in the world. Right. When well, you probably can't even enumerate. Mm hmm what place you in right. in that particular space. You know what I'm saying? But that's 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 one of the, the, the ways that people deal with hardship is like, what was me? Mm -hmm. I'm the only one. Nobody cares. No one, no one, you know, no one helps. Mm -hmm. You know, and then like you said, that energy gets focused to the significant other yeah. spouse, baby father, or whatever the case may be. Now it's like he becomes the recipient of of your hardship, even though he has a role in it, you know, and not so much as a contributor mm -hmm. to the hardship. It's just that, okay, I understand. It's hard for you, right. you know what I mean? But you can't just discredit what I got to go through going out this door as a man, first Dang and it. foremost, just as a man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all make it through customs all the time. Like y'all can just slip and slide all <laughs> right. through, you know what I'm saying? All right. through the planet. Right. And, 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 and pat it down. Yeah, check, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> Sit there for a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. You're just expired. I don't know if you can get like oh exactly. it's just like a that lot. last minute pamper run you sent me on. Yeah. Yeah, I got pulled over. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. I called you. You said that wasn't the one. Then I get another one. I come back home. You tell me this ain't there. Yeah. I can't. And I got I pulled can't. over twice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? By the same cop that was sitting in front of the, the supermarket. Like, <laughs> hey, what'd you come back for? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? But we don't document this stuff and we don't really pour it out. And that's one of the things, like you said, that kind of make fathers superheroes because we endure and we bottle this stuff up because it's not really masculine mm -hmm. to complain mm -hmm. first and foremost mm -hmm. because it's it's, it's, it's it's being a man. Right. You, you just you know it's just the condition that come with being a man. Mm -hmm. But then we do have our meltdown moments where you know it's just like you know what you run down everything and then it'd be like oh mm -hmm. you understand right. 
for the one they care. Yeah. You know, maybe going through their difficulty, but when they hear that 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 rundown, that list of yeah. everything that you've been doing mm-hmm. the past month, mm-hmm. it's just like, well, I didn't know. Yeah. You, you didn't ask. Yeah, you gotta be yeah. a listener. Yeah, you didn't ask. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Facts. But you know, but what I wanted to touch base on is um more so in your lane with the mm-hmm. finances. Mm-hmm. So Lately, we've had like this surgence of entrepreneurship, financial literacy, mm-hmm. and a lot of this information has empowered a lot of black and brown communities, have set off light bulbs in people's head to now they're more motivated to want to acquire, you know, financial stability mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, tread this path of entrepreneurship, business, and the likes. And it's opened up a whole new lane that actually contributes to all the things we're talking about as far as parenting goes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in some instance, it kind of eliminates some of the excuses that men used to have <laughs> when they wasn't privy to understanding what financial literacy was. Mm-hmm. Right. And to me, I'm just saying because you don't have to look for it. It's just there. Mm -hmm. It definitely eliminates the excuse of having to always resort to something primitive, like hustling in the street or whatever the case may be, because that's that's pretty primitive, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. You know, I talked about this not too long ago um, on the interview I did with 85 South. Mm -hmm. You know, shout out to my, my crew now. And... We were talking about basically um, how um, kind of lost track of my thought, but it was it, we were talking about like the options that the youth have today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what it was. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, and I was yeah. talking about our last resort was hit the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Their Arcade, last resort, the old. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, these are primitive bar, methods. Bar I mean, we didn't have many options. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And this and this is not just for the youth. This is all for also for able bodied men. Right. Is that the options have become a little bit more abundant? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It is not like okay, you don't make it in the league. All right, scratch that. You don't make it in the music business or acting or entertainment in general. I right, scratch that. You know what? I'm just so That's going an back. interesting thing right there what you're saying, right? Yeah. Um I want to dive into that okay. um really quick. Um and you know when when Derek is, is so amazing at what he does and and teaching people a lot of this this whole financial world. Um he can go on for hours about it. Um and uh, it, it what's interesting to me is when you're and me, I'm more of a thought leader, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm speaking from a more motivational, transforming the mind until mm-hmm. the be the ultimate mind kind yeah. of thing. So when I go with Derek, I'm the one that um before he goes on, I speak to people about setting up different small disciplines and habits to become great because I'm I'm a pivot, I'm gonna go into what I'm saying is a lot of people want to be married. Mm-hmm. I want to be a wife. I want to be a husband. Do you know what that means? Yeah. I want money. I want to be in the pros. Do you know what it really means yeah. to do those things? Yeah. The sacrifices it take to do those things. Yeah. Have you spoken to the other individual about their values, beliefs, and how we're going to structure this money and how when we have children, are we going to homeschool? No one does those things. See, in basketball, if you want to be a pro, you have to come to a pro. Yeah. Gilbert Arena's son, Elijah's reason why he's one of the best is because Gilbert says, you know what, listen, you're going to go do this. And when you're ready to come with me, I'm a bit of a, a butthole, a yeah, asshole. Yeah. I'm telling you now, yeah. we're waking up at 5, 5.30, we're in the gym. We're yeah. going to do this. We're going to do that. Yeah. It's 300 shots before you go to school. Mm-hmm. And your body's going to be really tired, but it's going to be... A, see, because we already... See, there's, there's sight mm-hmm. is what 90-something percent of people have. Mm-hmm. And then there's vision. That's within God. Yeah. Right? So your insight sight, and then there's your vision. The vision is something you believe in. Mm-hmm. A lot of people see they're copycats. Yeah. They don't have vision. vision yeah. See, yeah. when you have vision, then there's that's the goal, yeah. but you have to have a plan. Yeah. So I speak to people before Derek goes up about having a plan. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a goal. Yeah. 
I want a nail salon. I want a podcast. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. want a husband. Yeah. I want so what is your plan? Yeah. Well, my plan should be who do I become? Yeah. Because I'm only going to become, I'm only going to attract what's inside me. Yeah. You asked me to speak Mandarin, I can't speak Mandarin. I gotta go get Yao Ming. <laughs> no question. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to, if you start speaking Mandarin or Cantonese to me, I'm, whoa, whoa, hold on one second. Let me go get this person. But I'm in China. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're there, indulge in the culture. If you're in basketball, study it, is yeah. my point. Yeah. Become it. Yeah. Now, it may not be for you, but you have to get into that mode to really dissect being a method actor. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Like being a, when we were, well, when I was younger, they were more conscious rappers, mm-hmm. right? Care rest ones. Of the, it's like, it was more, you were more conscious yeah. of how you did things. Yeah. Now you have no disrespect to the youngins. I'm sorry. I'm just saying that what I see. Yeah. yeah. You got the J. Coles and the Kendrick Lamars and the J's and you got certain conscious individuals, common conscious individuals, but then you got people that just do it because guess what? It pays. It pays. I don't and care I, about and the that's frequency. It's be more common than rare because it's just the society we live in. Right. See, I wanted to expound on this when you mentioned before about, you know, just the 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 the, the gravity to the need for the dollar. Now, I've visited many countries, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I've been to six different continents, mm-hmm. you know, everywhere except Antarctica. And what I've learned outside, I don't think they want you to go there, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, look. Don't get him started yeah, on this. Yeah, look, that's, a, that's, that's a bucket list. That's another hour. Yeah. yeah. That's okay, another yeah. hour, dog. We're going to do that another yeah, time, yeah, dog. We're going to do that another that time. Really like he just wanted to conquer that one Yeah, time. yeah. A bucket list thing, though. Oh, my yeah. goodness. But my point is, when you go to other countries mm-hmm. and you experience other cultures, the dire need for money mm-hmm. is not as you know, intense Mm -hmm. as it is in America. Right. You know, you go places and you see some of the most impoverished people Mm -hmm. smile more than some of the most wealthy (laughs) people in America. Yeah. Like, you got the most wealthy people here that smile on the camera. It's almost like they do this when they just drop. (laughs) Yeah, fake. Yeah. 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 But you have people in, in, you know, is living below, you know, Mm -hmm. poverty. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not really classism neither. It's just, right. this is just this person's circumstances. Right. But right. no one treats him right. any less. Any less. You know, he has a name. He's not mm-hmm. the guy that's in front of the liquor store mm-hmm. asking for money. Right. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't get classified as a fixture mm-hmm. or a, a piece of furniture in the mm-hmm. community. It's mm-hmm. like people in other countries have a name. Oh, you seen Wong. There was, you know, whoa, 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 whoever, such and such. And he's smiling. He's always saying, how you doing? It's mm-hmm. like, he's not burdening you with his problem. Right. Whatever he has to offer or sell, provide, that's his focus. Right. Transaction doesn't take place. It's not cursing you out on the way out. It's just like, you know, <laughs> and it's like, wow. Yeah. Does this exist? You mm-hmm. know? So when I was getting into like with the options, like, like you said, it's important to definitely have a goal. Definitely important to have an objective. But I think with this generation, they have so much stuff on the table. And like what I mentioned in that previous interview is how a kid, their last resort, this generation, is social media. It's not mm-hmm. the street. Right. It's like, you know what? I give up. I'm just going to get me an OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Or well, I'm going to set up a camera and I'm just do foolish stuff for 30 seconds until I hit that algorithm and, you know, it monetize it. Mm-hmm. It's like you got a kid now mm-hmm. who, whatever they're doing, they got a check coming in that might actually yes. see their parents. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I say that to say, like I said, I believe we living in a time where the excuses for not achieving stability will scratch success. Because everybody has their own perspective of what yeah. success is. But to actually acquire the means to stabilize and structure your current situation, environment, I believe that we're at a point where, you know, the excuse for not having that is out the window. So big time. Yo, so so to go back to like what I was saying with 
you know, this influx of, you know, financial literacy, mm-hmm. mentors and teachers and educators and coaches and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. It's become definitely a culture mm-hmm. within the culture. Yeah. But what I've learned from looking at a lot of your content and following, you know, some of your, um, your, you know, your uh, talks and stuff, mm-hmm. I noticed that there's a whole nother level that hasn't been whole nother level. reached yet. Mm-hmm. Although I'm happy, you know, because I had actually had a, a a great guy on my show by the name of you know Marcus Barney, you can call him M500, yeah. mm-hmm. and he gave some great insight and game for someone who grew up in a generation where, you know, myself and other certain artists and influencers were relevant, and he was able to transfer all that into this certain level of financial education that mm-hmm. has definitely impacted a lot of people. You know, Troy and Rashad, Earn Your Leisure, all these guys. I met all these guys. Mm-hmm. These are great guys. But, you know, not to take away anything, but when I started listening to Derek and his 30-year experience dealing with banks and all of this type of stuff, I was like, you know what? This is another level. Mm-hmm. This is like this is like those gems that been locked away mm-hmm. You know, in several different saves. I want him to answer this. Yeah. But then we're gonna talk off air about the 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 masterclass module. I was told we were saying that we were doing. Yes. Yeah. This, this is the same kind of thing. But go ahead. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah, definitely. I just wanted to be what you kind of expound on. What that level looks like. Why is it important that what's being circulated now? has some significance, but how do we evolve to that level where we're extremely and firmly educated on, you know, the whole financial space in its entirety? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, we, the way I look at it is, is, is this is the age of Aquarius, right? We're entering in the okay. age of Aquarius. Okay. And so this thing comes in cycles. Right, everything is in cycles, like a twenty-five thousand year cycle. So every two thousand years, two thousand two hundred years, we go into another cycle. Mm-hmm. So we were in the Piscean era, and mm-hmm. the Piscean era was the age of darkness. And they they say they make fishermen out of men. That was because of the 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 guy they called Jesus was in the Piscean era, era, but that was pretty much a dark era, and the dark ages and all that stuff came out of that. So we're coming out of that now into we're dawning the age of Aquarius. So this is a natural, a natural occurrence and a natural thing where we're going into the age of light and information. So the stuff, uh, the stuff that our moms and dads, it was conditions where they didn't have, they weren't privy to that information, but now the internet is so vast until you actually need people like, you know, like, the him 500s and and all those people uh um and and uh, they're doing a you know i think they're doing a service yeah just to get know? people engaged to i think they've done in, a yeah. great job of getting people engaged mm-hmm. but like i said like i've listened to the intricacy of some of the things that you explain when it comes to getting into a whole nother space mm-hmm. where Many of us may not aspire to do that just yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe we don't know that we need to be looking at that and not, you know, trying to exhaust what's already there. Because I think that's turning into something repetitive where everyone's kind of jumping onto that train and like, you can get an LLC, you could do this, you know, the Dun & Bradstreet stuff. And all of those are means mm-hmm. to get into this level that I feel you have had a very successful career, 30 years, and I don't think any most of those guys is, you know, barely coming out of their 30s. So it, it wouldn't be no real correlation to what they've been able to get people engaged with versus you experiencing this, experiencing this at a high level when most of some of those guys probably were still, you know, 
pretty much in pamphlets. Yeah, yeah. Grand, yeah, wasn't born. Yeah, or, yeah, <laughs> or pooping on himself. And, or, you know, I just look like this. <laughs> <laughs> around when Jesus was walking. Right? So, you know, I, remember, I remember he got his first sandal. Uh, that's, right? yeah, that's old. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's old right there. You know, <laughs> three wise men. I was dead. It was like, <laughs> so, you know, but you got to give me, you got to, uh, these guys are making a, a huge impact and it's a natural occurrence. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to come in so that they can introduce this this ground level and then and then we come into the next level and the next level. Mm -hmm. It's a natural progression. Mm -hmm. So I got to take my hands off to these guys because some of these guys come out of like, you know, like the lotus flower. You know, lotus flower, it comes out the mud mm -hmm. and, 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 it, and it sprouts up and, and boom. It's and beautiful. then at night it goes yeah. back down in. Wow. You know, so it's the it's pressure that makes these guys come out. Mm -hmm. But they have the ability to come and explain things uh, on a ground level to get people interested. Yeah, to a generation that's been yeah. oblivious to yeah. this this particular, you know, space for yeah, yeah. Their entire lives. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people are saying, but wait a minute, if, if, if he can do it, then I can do it. Absolutely. So my job is to come in and say, okay, he introduced you to this. Now let's, you know, you ever think about being a Google? Mm -hmm. You know, you ever think about, you know, you get that that seed money, foundation capital, springboard funding. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they're showing, okay, we can come in and get that seed money. And like Kat was saying, you know, um, you know, where do you want to be? You know, what, what, what do you, you have to choose. But if you don't have a concept of something to choose, like you, you want a Ferrari. What's a Ferrari? Yeah. Then you, you know, you can't, you can't say, well, I want a Ferrari. Yeah. You know, I want a Rolls Royce or, and you know, it's not about the Rolls Royce or the Ferrari. It's about you saying, looking in the mirror and saying, I did well. Yeah. Instead of impressing everybody. That's what a lot of this is happening today. You know, but I think a lot of that because, you know, obviously, you know, we've heard it on autopilot the fact that we've been so, you know, disenfranchised, you know, we've been so ostracized and overlooked that instinctively we feel like if we put on, right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it'll validate. Mm -hmm. you know, it'll validate us or it will get people to pay attention. Yeah. Who never paid attention to us, right? Yeah. And I think it's I think is 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 a coping mechanism. I think, and, and I always tell people because like you know, I was young, you no know, getting money. You was young, like you said, money. You was getting the NBA, and at some point you got to get it out your system. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's a lot of people that actually, you know, because you know some some. And I hate to be kind of. I ain't even trying to be biased or anything. Mm -hmm. But you know, you have your all American. You know what I'm saying? White quarterback. Mm -hmm. mm. He already has a, t a team. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's going to nurture and cultivate his career so that he evolves to be, you know, not just a, 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 a star athlete, mm -hmm. but he's going to also thrive in the business space, mm -hmm. you know? And his desire to, you know, invest in the flash and everything, it's not there. Mm. It, it, it's just not from their demographic is not for them. Mm -hmm. But for us, like, we need those same type of people in our life to say, look, I right, check this out. Take this, put this to the side, go have fun. Mm -hmm. Get it out your system. Mm -hmm. All right, when you finish, okay, get moms a house. Mm -hmm. Make sure moms are straight. Mm -hmm. Your entourage, get them a house next to your mother's house. They don't get to go everywhere you go. So when you have home games, yeah. They all can come. See, now what you're saying right there, that that's like to be able to take a page out of that, whether they're Jewish, whether they're white, whatever it is, mm -hmm. a successful individual's book. I tell my kids this, like my daughter's 10, my son's 14, other son's 23 and 24. You don't owe each other nothing. Mm -hmm. It's my job to make sure that they empower each other. Absolutely. Individually. Mm -hmm. You understand? So Tom Brady, did you buy your dad a house? In your mama house, right? Mm -hmm. Like John Elway, did you? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I, I don't know. Now, The Rock came from a different yeah. environment where his father and him bumped heads. His father passed away. His mom was alone, so his mom was a part of the family. He buys his mom's house, one of the houses she always dreamed of. Great. Mm -hmm. But if his father was already fortunate, like a Peyton Manning's father, yeah. is Peyton buying his father a house? No. His mother a house? No. Yeah. The father already took care of that. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. want to stay in our own house. Yeah. Right, and a lot of those kids, I grew up with the white kids, a lot of those white kids, suburban kids, the mother was more of a servant. She was in the house, she was at breakfast, lunch, dinner. She kept the house take, in order. Exactly, kept it in order. Now, I'm not saying they, please don't get me wrong, people out there. I'm not saying that's the way to do it because the father could have been a bad person, but yet on the outside surface, he could have been amazing to everyone else. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. But for us, we need to understand that what Derek teaches, we need to understand that like we have survivor's remorse. Mm -hmm. So if I make it, everybody makes it. No, it's not how it works. Yeah. It shouldn't work like that. You need to put in work. Yeah. You need to put your work in, right? Like Kobe was mad at guys on his team. He's like, yo, practice at 10. I get here at like 7. You get here at 950. You want me to pass you the ball? Man, you're out your mind. It's not yeah. working like that. Yeah. So I'm sitting here making $300 million, $150 million, and I meet this girl and we have kids, so you get half of that, but yet you yeah. was doing whatever you wanted to be attractive yeah. all day long. No disrespect, mama, but no, that's not how this one works. Yeah. And we should help hold each other more accountable like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like when, when, when Derek is teaching these things, it's like, all right, I want to really study. And if they're not on my game, they're not on Amir's game. They're not on Catino's game. They're not on his game. You don't get none of this. Yeah. You have to study with me. Yeah. When I'm on that track, you on the track. When I'm in them books, you in the books. Mm -hmm. It has to be like that for us as a community because it's not like, okay, so I was riding with him since I was younger. All right, did you pick up the books he picked up? Did you yeah. work out when he went to go work out? Yeah. Were you praying when he was praying? And see, those are the things that have to be managed because like when we look at our young athletes, we look, look at our young entertainers. We look at our young actors, whatever the case may be. Yeah, they may be with the Screen Actors Guild. They, mm -hmm. may, they may be signed to all of these different unions mm -hmm. that play one significant role in their career. Mm -hmm. But how do one acquire this when that component is not present? You know what I'm saying? See, like, you achieve certain things that it would be a benefit mm -hmm. for someone to extract that understanding from you. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at these young kids, and, 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 you, and you're right, like survivor's remorse is a crutch. It's mm -hmm. something that impedes us from growing and scaling mm -hmm. in whatever it is we do. But unfortunately, that becomes the only support system that some of us know. Mm -hmm. You know, and how we manage that it, it, it could ultimately be an asset or it could be a detriment. But you already know some some of these Fuck. situations is like you you start tripping on your homeboy all of a sudden. He's not looking at your hard work and all that no more. Right. He's looking at you playing him like he's a sucker. And or something that's like, why. You know, now you can very much be a martyr out here. Right. Messing yeah. with some Fox. of these kids that they, it's like, yeah, it's like you can very much end up on a t-shirt. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just because you told your boy, no, I went car shopping. I ain't get to you yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that is, you know, expected and you feel entitled to that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Coming yeah. to some of these rough streets, that's, I mean, a lot of these kids can actually lose everything they work for when this is the only support system you know. Yeah. So like, you know, because I know you deal with a lot of this from a mentorship perspective. I talk to a lot of kids around the world, but I'm, I'm definitely interested in how would you advise someone who's living in that situation to not fall victim to, you know, survivor's remorse and not fall victim to ignorance of, you know what I'm saying, the, the need to have structure. Yeah, economic. So, yeah, so um, I forget who the kid was. Um, I was in Dallas, and um, we, my son, my 14-year-old, but he was 13 at the time. This was last summer, beginning of last summer, or the summer for the, I don't know, what it was. Anyway, we were in Dallas, and we were at the sports academy. We used to be Mamba Sports Academy. Okay. Yeah. So it was a sports academy in uh, Frisco. Shout out to my, my boy Nate, who's the head uh, trainer there. There was a kid in there, and he was a ball player, basketball player. 
And he had another kid in there that was just following him around. Overweight kid, no disrespect to that, but he's overweight. But this kid is grinding. So I pulled the kid that was grinding to the side. I'm like, yo, I don't even know who you are, youngin', but what's he doing? He's oh, it's just my homie. I said, but you know, I cursed. Yo, tell him to work the fuck out. Yeah. Work out. Yeah. Why are you here? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Right? Because then now, if I can empower you in this way and these habits, sooner or later, your brain gonna start clicking business. Your brain is gonna start clicking. How do I hold myself? Your brain is gonna clicking. I got more confidence in myself. You're yeah. not going to be attracted to these type of women and girls and these other dudes. You're going to really take care of your guy, mm -hmm. your homie, your brother. You're going to really do those things because guess what? I'm feeling better about myself too. Yeah. But if I'm sitting there, whatever y'all did the night before, and then I come into this gym and I'm just sitting around, I'm, you know, Instagram and I'm, you're flunky. Yeah. So the one that's the working out, you need to start setting boundaries. So if it's going to be one or two of them, listen. My ride or dies, y'all want to be with me? Yo, we got to be up at six. We're going to run. Yeah. Yo, we got to go read this book all together. So then now, guess what? Sooner or later, even if you want to pay them, mm -hmm. you're paying them to keep you accountable because now you're keeping them accountable. So that's how it works. Yeah. So if I'm going to tell them, yo, Amir, yo, we got to, uh, yo, we're going to work out at five in the morning, all right? And then, oh, and then you tell me, yo, we're going to go pray. All right, cool. So it's yeah. reciprocal. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. don't do that because we don't, we've never been taught boundaries. Yeah. That's See, when you play in a sport, yeah. when you're in a religion, right. it's you know, a boundary. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get cut. You, this going to happen. Yeah. But Constantly. the thing in real life, yeah. you got all these guys that hang on to you, all these girls that come in. It's like, no, no, no. If you want to be, a, this is work now. Let's go. This is what you got to do. Yeah. It's like things like that we should be able to do. So, you know, I would tell cats, even if those cats are hanging around you, you got to start setting up boundaries. So I have like 10 different things that I, when I speak with Derek, it's, those more, it's a morning routine, it's discipline, it's, you know, self this, it's boundaries, it's intentions. I, you know, break them down. Yeah. And boundaries is one of the most important things because if you don't have that, I don't even know where you go from there. Yeah. You're going to attract who you are. So I, I need to become my best. So when I attract, I attract the best. Yeah. That's just how it is, right? So, you know, I, I would say to those younger cats, if they're going to hang around you, get them up. Kyle Lowry, Rudy Gay, Rasul Butler, rest in peace. They would come, they wouldn't even approach yet, basically. Mm. They would come to me in Houston and we would go have fun. But guess what? Five, six in the morning, guess yeah. where we at? In the gym. Let's go. I'm not playing with y'all. Yeah. Got to get this bread. I don't care what you do the night before. Mm -hmm. Let's go get this bread. We are a brand. Yeah. And then all of us have to think the same. That's just how it works. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. That's a great point. The, you know, the thing is, we're not taught. We're taught the golden rule. You know, a lot of us we have some decent parents, even if it's a, a single parent. But I still want to. I want to give a uh, a hand to a lot of the the, uh, the females and the brothers that are there with you when you had nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now they still now they still with you. Those are the cats that say, "Hey, man, you know, you need something." Yeah, you know you you know you know. And I went out to Texas. I was with him in Texas, and he said, "Yeah, man, let me go and go out and you know." And and these these guys ran up to him and these big huge cats, man. You know, cat that cat. It was all on them. I said, he said, I said, man, who are these guys? I said, you don't have to worry about nothing in here. Yeah, because from the story when I met them, they was telling me all these stories about. Yeah, man, man, remember Cat when Cat did this, man, he did this for me. <laughs> the cat did that for me. Yeah. That he said, man, he even even extended to me. Yeah. Right? And uh, we sitting up in there in Rolls Royces. And these cats are coming to me, man. You need any things, just let me know. Yeah. yeah what, what you need, man. He said, yo, this is my people. You know, we we look, nobody better not come up in there talking about messing with you, yeah. right? So I was like, well, I said, so cat, you know, I'm new to this. I'm usually the backdoor guy, you know, I help the the, the people usually have money, and so I'm in the back. You know, people. Yeah, that's why like you're on the that. show. You got to bring you out. Like, yeah, you got to bring you out in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be hiding in the back no more because you you definitely have you know you have a lot to offer. But yeah, yeah just like like you said, there's merit to those contributions. Yeah, that come with having people in your corner. There's merit to making sure. 
that to some degree they're gonna be all right. That's right. But now to what level they're gonna be all right. Right. That's... That comes with having some understanding of what they could potentially That's right. do to benefit themselves first and foremost. Because you know, we ain't trying to help people so that I could run down on you later and say, mm-hmm. yo, remember that time. You was short on Pampers, and I threw that to you. Mm-hmm. Or you don't remember? Mm-hmm. Like, that's 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 not you know that's not what we 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 want to yeah. see. We want to learn how to throw that rope back. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that's the one thing us as a people we want to help each other. We don't know how. Right. I don't think we really know how. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like all of these means are accessible. And that's what makes it a real travesty because when you look at us and it's like, and this also gives those people who are in opposition to our success the ability to say or be insensitive to our situation because they're like, yo, it's, y'all, it's there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're not going to hold y'all hand, mm-hmm. but it's there. You got access to this. You got access to that. You got access to education. You got a phone in your pocket, right? Smartphone at that. Probably the best phone on the market. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Barely got a pot to piss in, but we all got 15 pros mm-hmm. and pro maxes. So it's like, when I, like I said, I'm at a point where what I want to highlight when I bring people onto this show is to try to eliminate all the excuses that stagnate us mm-hmm. from growing, mm-hmm. you know? And like you said, it may seem harsh to somebody who hasn't got to that mental space yet. Like, nah, I don't treat my homies like that. Okay. <laughs> I just did nine years in the feds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't no homie time before I went to prison. But you do see the decline in your support system. Not from your immediate circle. You know, the wife, the kid. You know, they they there. They're not going nowhere. Yeah. But when you, those other people who claim that Correct. they care, this is the closest to being dead, to being in prison. You start to really see how that decline in your support system becomes when hardship becomes, you know, a little long-winded, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So it's important, like you said, to set boundaries. Let yeah. it be known, like, listen, every time, remind them, not just once. Because mm-hmm. yeah. you tell them that five years ago, mm-hmm. he ain't going to remember you set that boundary. Mm-hmm. You got to always. Always, man. After the work, I swear, you know, you, you, you yeah. See what I was out there doing. Let's right? go. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Listen, tomorrow, you won't get in here too, B. Yeah. Like, I'm you know not. Yeah. Listen, it's one thing about giving and teaching. Yeah. You can give somebody some all day. And that's, I think, uh, as our community, we're okay with accepting, giving, right? Mm-hmm. And they, it, the, you got to be very careful. If I can teach you how to do it, it's going to take more time because the, the, the most interesting, most valuable part of that is who you become within the teaching. Mm-hmm. But if I give you something, I'm hindering you from growing. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of us that don't really understand the intricate, the in-depth part of that because they were giving it. They, it was given to them mm-hmm. because they didn't really study and get real deep in it because I can't teach you something I don't know. I can only teach you what I know. Right? Mm-hmm. That's actually the give of it. It's not the teachings of it. Yeah. So who... You were 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Whoever came up to you, you can only give them that. Now, 10 years later, guess what? You can give them so much more. So much more, Because you've learned and you've studied and you've prayed and you've explored and you've, there's more. A lot of us cap ourselves because it's too much work. Yeah. I'm not going to go with Kobe because it's a blackout season. I'm yeah. not going to go with Catino because it's this. Yeah. I'm not going with Tim Grover because it's this. Yeah. Oh, man, that's too hard over there. You ever see somebody go work out with you the first time and then they're, 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 can't move my legs oh, and my yeah, arms yeah. and you don't see them for two weeks? No question. It's too hard for them. <laughs> no question. It's hard. Yeah. And if you I'm dumb it down, you, you're cheating yourself. It's there like, you go. I need, yeah, you I want need, me to give you the muscles and yeah. you know how to develop the muscles. There's a difference. Yeah. Right? There's a difference. Right? I'm not going to sit here after Monday work looking at the mirror and say, oh, yeah, I look good. No. Yeah. You're not going to see no improvement. Yeah. Not right away. That's not how that works. So, listen, before we kind of, um, you know, be close to wrapping, I want to make sure that I give you opportunity to, you know, set the tone for a few people I got in mind. One, small business owners, right? Mm-hmm. 
small business owners should definitely be moving towards becoming franchises, right? Yeah, yeah. How do small business owners scale their business? How does, you know what I'm saying, young entrepreneurs, you know, uh, uh, embark on another level of entrepreneurship in regards to, you know, generating the funds or whatever is required to become a Fortune 500 company? Because you, you know, you you raise funds for politicians, yeah. actors, you know, athletes, yeah. small businesses, major yeah. corporations. So we don't know how to get to that. You know what I'm saying? What, and nobody's what, teaching us. Exactly. So what's transpired, you know, we mentioned before, with those who have initiated the spark, those the generation of financial mentors who have initiated the spark. Now that we understand that we can get a jump on certain things, how do we take that and start scaling to where we get into a space where we either become assets in general, or in some cases, and I got to be realistic, threats? Yeah, that's a very good point. So a lot of times you got to watch what you say so that you don't become too much of a threat. Yeah. Because if if you are uh, become extinct, then how many can you help? Absolutely. So in saying that, the, the one thing that we have to do is we have to learn structure. We have to learn the foundation, mm-hmm. you know, so if, so... They should teach us this stuff in, in high school, grammar school, yeah. because you need money like close to eating. You, you can't eat if you don't have money, right? And if you have to wake up every day, and, and, and like Muhammad Ali said, I heard, heard him say a lot of times, you go to work 10 hours, you come home, you sleep eight hours. Then after that, what you got, like five hours for yourself? You know, time is moving fast. Yeah. And we're not, not meant here to just sit and suffer. Now, some being being wealthy is not for everybody. Okay, yeah, it makes sense to that because I don't think okay. a lot of people would say ah, being wealthy I don't is know, not for yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, if it. you don't like paperwork, you don't want money. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you put now it like some, that. Yeah. Now, now, some people are hands-on people. Mm-hmm. Some people like I'm a service guy. I put in I put in doors, but um, and they're saying, look, uh, they have the mentality that because they've been trained that way throughout history. You need to work and work, but that's the 85% that think that way. Mm-hmm. The fifth, the 10% run everything and the 5% know what's going on. Wow. Right? Okay. So that's kind of like your Jay-Z's and the people in the Erica Badu's common, they call themselves 5 percenters, right? Mm-hmm. They know what's going on. So what I try to do is, is to show them foundation. So there's rules. If you don't understand the rules of how to, you know, you don't necessarily have to know how the car, how the engine's built, but you should at least know so in the rules of the road. Yeah. You try to go from Cali to New York, and you you really just skimmed over the test. You got your license, but you may not make it to New York because you really didn't study the rules. Yeah. So a cop pull you over. You're like, okay, get out the car. Well, why? Just give me my ticket, you know. No, you went over 100 miles an hour, and you must have didn't study because that's a felony. Yeah. Or you now, change lanes in the lane. You change, with your, but it's a felony to go over 100, and I clocked you, so now you're going to jail, taking your car, you can't do this, you can't. A lot of times it's a setup because you don't know the rules, mm-hmm. and they know they should teach you the rules, mm-hmm. right? So the rules, are, if you follow the rules, 99% of the time you will win. Right, just like this, it's operating on a brain. A guy studied; people have studied forever, like you know, neurosurgery. Mm-hmm. He understands the rules. You know, you don't use a hammer; you use it. You know, so. So let me ask you this. Let me give you a scenario. You just you can roll it out for me. If mm-hmm. I came to you, startup company. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've invested, you know, nice percentage of my own funds. Just to That's a no-no. There we go. Okay, let's go. That's a no-no. See, this is where I'll get to the rules. Okay. All right. So the rules, other people's money, other people's ideas, and other people's efforts, right? Mm -hmm. This is 2,000 years old. Mm -hmm. The stuff that we're talking about is 2,000 years old. It's just that we weren't taught that. You know, we went through the whole diaspora thing, 
you know, coming here and going through that. But when they came here, they came here, the forefathers, they said they came here for like, you know, like uh, uh, religious beliefs, really, all of that, so I can have religious. Ah, that's not true. They came here for free labor and free land. Hmm. You know, they didn't come here to, you know, the first, second rule is everything is in Latin, mm -hmm. right? So you had the poor language, which was Aramaic 2,000 years ago, Jesus. They, 85%, they were like farmers. They didn't know any better. You know, they thought they had to work, 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 work. And then you had the, the Latin speakers. They were the rich people. They spoke Latin. Romans. The Romans. And then they had the, you know, of course, the people spoke Hebrew, the Jews, Jewish people. And, uh, but that was a poor language. Today is the same thing, a poor language. English is a derivative of Latin, but it's a poor language. It's like Aramaic. And the 85% speak a poor language today. I don't care if you're from England. It's still a poor language. Mm -hmm. They call it a Vultic of Latin. Okay. So my point is, we got to get out of, out of Aramaic or English and start understanding Latin. Mm -hmm. That's the rule of money. Okay. So second of all, the rule of money is you want money, but what money about? I mean, money is based on water law, okay. not moral law. So you, when you did whatever you did and being incarcerated, you put your hand up, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, Ten Commandments. They had you on moral law. Okay. But we need to understand, we need to start dealing in water law. Okay. So we separate ourselves from, from second or third rule. We own nothing and control everything. And we blame it on the court. I just learned that. Own yeah. nothing, control everything. Okay. I just learned. I literally just learned that. But and you, I figure myself as a smart person. Yeah. But like smart in certain stuff, right? So what he's saying, you know, you control it. That's the masses, right? The the masses of the the, the biggest names in the world in central bank, everything. Mm -hmm. They own nothing, but they control every single thing. Yeah. And that's how we should. Exactly. But see, the thing is, there's no justice in that. So, like, and this is for me. You know, you know, me, I look at the society that we live in and everything that you're saying would definitely be applicable to how this society functions, how, you know, business and everything that revolves around this society is structured. And that's, that's, that's valuable information to understand because not just from the perspective of how do I thrive in this situation, but also to understand how you're perceived when you're not a part of that percentage of people who operate in this capacity. You understand? So how you perceived? How you perceive, meaning the masses. Mm -hmm. The masses don't know that they're perceived that way. Mm -hmm. You know, as something that's being controlled. Mm -hmm. They don't see themselves that way. Mm -hmm. Because there's a certain facade that some of that 85% that not aware Mm -hmm. believes that they're functioning in a capacity where they are acquiring some level of success, but in all actuality, those that uh, 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 um, that smaller percentage mm -hmm. is actually even controlling that. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's no freedom in that concept because whether you are a part of the eighty five percent that's thriving under those circumstances, or you're the percentage that fell short completely, and you're just you know, at rock bottom, you're still being controlled by people who have put certain contingencies and stuff in place to maintain that control. So really quick, and I want you to elaborate both of you. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, when he teaches the finance, I'm, I'm more so teaches how we think. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just to the audience and everybody, you know, um, the perception, the perceiving of the 85% to the 10 to the 5 mm -hmm goes all the way down to wants and needs, mm -hmm. okay? When you were 20, what you wanted was different than when you're 30, than when you're 40. Mm -hmm. Then when you're 50, 60, you get 70, I don't want for much. Yeah. But I'm happy. Hopefully, that's, you put yourself to that. Yeah. Maturity, yeah. There's a book called Outwitting the Devil. Okay. And the devil speaks to the interviewer and explaining to the interviewer 
that 98% of us is controlled by six different things. Okay. Whether it's fear, poverty, this, that, or whatever. So the most powerful thing that Allah, God has given us is what? Choice. Mm -hmm. Free will. Free will. You ever see older people and they're like, I'm okay, I'm happy. As long as you, I'm happy, they're content. Mm -hmm. Could be successful. Mm -hmm. Could be wealthy. Could be rich. Could be, by our standards, poor financially, but wealthy with inside. Or they could just be grateful. Grateful. Okay? Mm Mm-hmm. So I think that's what it is when it comes, when you're speaking that, for me, that's what it is. It's like, how do I get to that point? Mm -hmm. Whether you have a billion or you don't have a billion. Mm -hmm. How do I get to that point of being grateful, right? Appreciative, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And understanding that it's not so much as the money, but it's your mindset behind the money. And what exactly do you want my daughter my son I remember my oldest son at the time he's four or five years old and he had all the toys and he didn't even open them all there's an authentic hadith right the prophet say he hadith, mentioned hadith hadith, hadith is hadith. a prophetic narration okay so any hadith is either a statement or action mm-hmm. or silent approval of the prophet Muhammad mm-hmm. peace be upon him he said that the sons of Adam, if you were to give the sons of Adam, because we're the sons of Adam, mm-hmm. uh, that's the original man. Mm-hmm. If you were to give the sons of Adam wealth the size of Mount Uhud, mm-hmm. which is a mountain in Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. they'll want another one. Mm-hmm. You're never satisfied. So with that being said, now we understand our nature. In a nutshell, you don't even need to go into all of the different dynamics because all of us, to some degree, possess that level of desire. Mm-hmm. Not need, mm-hmm. like you said. You mm-hmm. got wants, you got needs. Mm-hmm. Wants always exceed needs. Mm-hmm. That's just normal. Mm-hmm. But some people, wants are they needs. I only need, you know what I'm saying? I only want what I need. Mm-hmm. I don't want no more. I just mm-hmm. want what I need. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the contentment I've seen in a lot of my world travels. Yeah. That a person you know that has an expiration. This is such a great yeah, conversation. That's, that's, we can do another time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the, the, the once in our lives, like I said, 20, 30, 40, 50, mm-hmm. the once in our lives has an expiration. You were, saying that you, you were saying this earlier, right? Yeah. But I think the gratitude doesn't. I think that's once why you I was, get that, yeah, yeah. you can die with that. That's yes. why I was exactly. saying. Right? That's why I was saying everybody's not meant to be rich. When you said wealth, yeah. Wealth. Nah, this, okay. That's how I was going to get rich. back to that. Everybody not meant to be rich because people's now. mindsets. Right. But you got to understand, you live in a society. capitalistic society. Wow. There you right. go. Okay, so you're gonna certain things you don't want to do. You have to you do. do. Mm-hmm. You can sit back all day and you can say, "Hey, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to go this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do. It. I'm free." Well, be free and starve. Mm -hmm. Well, be free, and then your wife and your kids are left with nothing. You can't leave them Malcolm X Boulevard. You can't leave them Juneteenth. (laughs) You can't leave them, you know, uh, uh, Martin Luther King's birthday. They Mm got to say to celebrate Juneteenth, and they got to go right back to the same stuff they went before Juneteenth came. So you live in a capitalist. People ask me, they say, okay, uh, I say, "What what what do you do? They say, oh, I'm a truck driver. I say, not no more. After you finish with this, you're not a truck driver. When I finish talking to you, hopefully you understand I'm a businessman and I'm a capitalist in a capitalistic society Mm -hmm. looking for capital, Mm -hmm. right? That is either legal or makes makes sense. I just thought of something. Both. So now, I mean, most of the things you do illegally, you could do legally. Mm -hmm. Right? And come out with the same thing. You like selling drugs. Most people go to jail for selling drugs. Open a damn pharmacy. And they give you a medal for selling drugs. <laughs> so it's a thin line. It's yeah. a thin line between legal and, and illegal. A lot of people say, oh, Lord, these rich people, man, that's, oh, that ought to be illegal. That's because they're going against the guidelines. So they I don't play say, by the rules. They play by the rules. And, you know, like for instance, they say, they say, well, uh, 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 I want to be like Oprah, but you don't want to know what Oprah knows. Yeah. You don't want to do what Oprah does. You just want, you know, like he said, you know, I was in the gym. Did you shoot 300 uh, uh, shots? How you want? 
You can't be Coutinho. You want to be Coutinho, but you got to do what he does. So that's why I say you have to learn the rules, and they're not the rules. It's in Latin. First rule, money's in Latin. It's water law. You got to remove yourself from morals. They own you as a person because you're a citizen. United States of America is a corporation. Mm. So if they're a corporation, then what, Then follow what they're doing. But I don't think they understand what yeah, you just said. And that's said. what I was going back to. Uh, yeah. The United States being a corporation, 90-something Out of Delaware. people, they do not and understand and that. That's what I was getting to when I said that 85%, right? They're oblivious. No matter how they function in this society, what you just said, right? That sheds a whole new light on how this country and this society should be viewed, mm -hmm. right? Because if I'm a part of a corporation that puts a stain on patriotism, right? Uh, yeah, but but you I know, mean it should. I'm not saying but, it does, but, but it should because I mean no one's being patriotic for a Fortune 500 company. But, no one's standing out. No one gets a tattoo of Forbes. Like, no, no one does but, but that. No really, one goes above and but beyond you, but, to represent but, something that has emerged as a, 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 a token or a pillar of success in this society and, and wear that on their sleeve as a badge of honor. But when it comes to the country itself, mm -hmm. and you're saying now, which... A lot of people don't know. But what I'm saying to you is true patriotism. What we're doing is anti-patriotism. Okay. See, a lot Explain of times, that. a lot of times people go in, I do like a webinar, a seminar, and I come in and I show them this, I show them this paper that Ben Franklin made, okay. the first money, mm -hmm. right, for this country. On the paper, it says, now they didn't have, they, they didn't have back in Ben Franklin days, they didn't have watches. Mm -hmm. They didn't have like, you know, he invented, the, you know, the clock, right? They had like a, like a, like a, the Legend. sun would shine on the, mm -hmm. the uh, thing and it would tell time sundial. like that. A sundial. Yeah. So he invented the first money. And on that money was, a, was the sun shining down on this sundial, right? And it was called a, a Fujio. A Fujio. Okay, what's that? Okay. So the sun's shining down on this da sundial. It said that it represents time. Okay. And then it had Fugio on the side of the money. That's Latin. That's Latin. Okay. Right? I mean, if you go to a judge, the judge says, all rise. He's sitting in the jail or whatever. He sits on a bench. What does bench mean in Latin? A bench means in Latin, bank. So we got to start understanding what's going on here. Right? You know, I learned, I just learned all that. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot. That different. lawyers and judges actually are appointed and work actually underneath Queen Elizabeth of the whole thing. So when you go inside there, right, there's a sovereign. That, oh, it's the craziest. Yeah, thing. It's yeah. The so, but thing. see, a lot of people are becoming sovereign when they don't when they don't understand that when they when they invented this when they brought this country forward, it, it they 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 came up with something with the corporation that says. Use this as your straw man. So they don't understand. A lot of people don't understand. I don't have to dismiss myself from this I, uh, uh, and, and, and remove myself from statehood, you know, because of treaties. And, uh, you know, they, you could just get a corporation the way it was planned for the rich to do and remove themselves from all liability. Mm -hmm. And you're still doing your thing. But my point is, if if you if you if you understand the rules, you understand the game. Don't be don't hate the game. Don't hate the player. Be a learn the rules and be a player. If you play if you're just playing to play play ball or football and you come in with a tennis racket on a football field, you're gonna get hurt because so, you're playing two different rules. So, so what so, I want to say okay. to you mm -hmm. is that is that rule number one is that we don't perform. We don't perform. That was never here. It wasn't here. Uh, uh, see, what they're doing is, is something Latin is called, education is called uh, inducere. Okay. Inducere in Latin means to educate, to bring out of you what's the best in you. That's education. Okay. But they're not doing true education. They're inducing you. They're putting stuff in you 
so that you can go and de- deal with what they put in you. That's but still an education. It's, it, well, it's education. It's but not a beneficial but, but, education, but, 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 but it's, just, still, it's, still, yeah, it's still an education. You're not bringing out of you the best of what's in you. Yeah. That's what education is. In Ducare, to bring out of you, which naturally is in you, the best yeah. out. They're putting stuff in you. So even you go to business school, they teach you how to work for somebody else, mm-hmm. right? They don't teach you how to finance, how to build a company. Those are what they call skull and, skull and crossbone schools. Okay. Those are the people who are meant to lead this whole world, lead this country, go to Dartmouth, Princeton, Yale. Those people are going in and learning how to run the 85%. So what I'm trying to uh, educate in, in Ducare, Latin, is that you need to go in and do what, like, like, like you said, a patriotism. When the country was built, they put together that was something that was called a, a doctrine, a, uh, a constitution. Mm-hmm. The, they, they formed a corporation. Mm-hmm. United States is a corporation, yeah. right? It, 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 and, and then they put in a contract. And the contract is the strongest thing in this country, a contract and a notary because mm-hmm. it's business. So you go in, what's the constitution? It is a contract with the people. We the people Right, in order to, to so they they sign this contract. Ben Franklin, and all these people sign a contract, and then they get the people that sign it are notaries, mm. right? So the true patriotism is is to go in and do the things that they set up, but they're not teaching you what they really set up. Yeah, well, so, so see, you, that make that makes sense. Yeah, but just just to be clear, you know, and I'm and I'm gonna say this in closing. Like one, I've never been a patriot because you know that's not something that was instilled in my community and in oh, yeah. my people to you know be victims of Stockholm syndrome, like to fall in love with our kidnappers. Mm-hmm. You know, I've learned more about you know this country outside of the country. I've never been called an American since mm. I left this country. Mm. You understand? Only time, and I mentioned this somewhere before, that we are acknowledged as Americans is when it's the Olympics, the World Cup, or war. Once those things have proceeded, mm-hmm. you don't I go matter. back to being an uh, Edgar from New York. You go back to being you go from Philly, you go mm-hmm. back to being like, this is the reality of Facts. why patriotism is not something that I'm inclined to. Now, everything that you share, and there's information that is important for anyone who has been subjected mm-hmm. to this country, this society, mm-hmm. how it runs, what it stands for, all those things should be a given, Mm -hmm. you know? It shouldn't be information that's concealed Mm -hmm. because we go back into those percentages of people who are aware Mm -hmm. and that small percentage of people who are not aware. Mm -hmm. And there's no justice in that. That's Mm -hmm. a grave, gross, you know, unjust practice to keep so many people in the blind or something that directly impacts their lives. Now, for me... Well, hold on a second. Okay. It's up to us. It's up to us to teach us. It's not there for learning starts at home. Yeah. And so we just didn't have the information, you know, from what we went through to give our children this. But now this is the age of information, mm-hmm. right? And it's up to us to have these conversations mm-hmm. and say, listen, this is how you can think. Mm-hmm. Right. Hey, this is how you get the finance. There's nine aspects of life that are not addressed. Mm-hmm. Right. And so there's going to be economics, education, entertainment, uh, uh, labor, law, uh, uh, politics, uh, religion, economics and war. Mm-hmm. Those are the nine aspects that run our life. And so it's up to us as a people. To a to a, to you have leaders like you're always going to have a bird, and the rest is going to be flying behind it. Mm-hmm. So certain people, Allah put certain people here to lead, 
mm-hmm. right? And it's up to people like you to put stuff on like this to, you know, as a leader. But the benefit of that leadership is to lead in accordance to what he prescribed. So, you know, from an Islamic perspective, and sure. I'm going to say this, you know. And, and what does this Islam mean, right? One who submission. submits to yes. the will of Allah. Yes. So anybody can, can be, be a Muslim. Muslim. Absolutely. Right? So Islam is, it's the Islam al-Ilahi bi It means submission to Allah with Tawheed, meaning singling him out and him alone right. for all acts of worship. But in qiyad lahu bi in compliance with that, with obedience. Mm-hmm. And this association with polytheism and its people, mm-hmm. right? So this simplistic guideline, all of those other things conform with that as long as it doesn't, you know, align with disobedience to what our creator prescribed for us. So wealth is important. Maintaining, you know, financial stability is important. All of these things that we discussed today is important. Mm -hmm. But as human beings, like you said, there's this gross negligence in how people are being educated, the Latin term that you use, right? That comes from man. That comes from man exceeding the boundaries that's been put forth, Mm -hmm. that establishes justice it enables all of us to thrive based on what reached us of knowledge and education of certain matters. But when the deck, the deck is stacked against you, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, the rules are not clear. What happens is the ratio of success becomes what? Disproportionate. Small, yeah. Right? Small, yeah. You have a large percentage who's like in the lottery. They playing their number every day, hoping that one day they hit. It's then you like got the, people that's controlling the lot. It's like being a pro. I mean, how many people are actually, people are dreaming that I'm going to get my mama out of, like some of you were saying, I'm going to buy my mama a house if I just make it to the pros. How many damn people are actually going to become a pro? Yeah. I mean, that's like a that, <laughs> needle that. in a haystack. So what we have to do is we have to learn that we do non-performance income. We don't play basketball. We don't sing. We don't dance. We don't do none of that, right? Unless we love it. Not because we need the money. Because we need to learn how to have education about money so we can get that. So when that when that woman says, you know what? You, the guy says, you got the part. Well, oh, I got the part. Yeah, you got the part. Now step on in here, sign these papers, and lock the door behind you. Hmm. And says, oh, okay, so yeah. You know, pretty thing. And he said, well, you know, I'm the guy that's responsible for getting you to party. She didn't say, man, if you don't get your hand off of me, I don't need this. Mm -hmm. Because I got a Benz outside. I know how to get money. Right? I was taught that. I'm here because I love it. And one thing that he talks about when he plays ball, he said, I think he said to me last night, we was out eating dinner last night at at the the, uh, the hotel. He says, "Um, you know what? I, I love this game. You know, I'm saying this because of something <laughs> he brought up to me last night. It just popped in my brain. To it, me, it comes from here to here and out here. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just not a script, right? So he came to me, said something to me last night. You know what? A lot of people do this because they got to do it. I do this because I love it. Absolutely. I love it. Yeah, so you've been out of the league since what, 08? Huh? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. my thing is we need to gotta learn. We need to learn the rules. The rules, like I said, they, they made this thing. He made the first money. It's called the Fujio. Mm-hmm. The Fujio was a sun shining down on a sundial. Mm-hmm. This is the first money. And then it had over here, it says, it said at the bottom, it said, it says. So it's the face, first paper currency. The first paper currency. Okay. It says, mind your business. And everybody laughs at that. When I showed him the paper, says, what that say? Mind your business. He didn't mean, hey, you know, stay out of my business or else. Mm-hmm. Right? It meant time is running fast. So take care of your business. Because back when it started, so everybody... So govern your business. So mind, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 check it. But when this first started, 
Nobody worked for anybody. That's mm. why he put that out there so broadly. People were apprentice or they had a business. Mm. Now, 85% work for somebody. So how do we have independence if we don't understand we should be working for ourselves? Well, to what I derive from that is that that is a business. Controlling people is a business. Mm-hmm. That's a business. That's a business. That's a business. But mm-hmm. since they control, we they, grew up. It was called pimping. But mm-hmm. well, guess what? Right. But guess what? they call it with us. But guess yeah, what? You know, you know, they call our you call our neighborhoods ghetto. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They call it a ghetto, mm-hmm. but it's actually a Jewish term because Jews lived in ghettos in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's the truth. Right. Yeah. Benjamin Franklin went over to Europe, and he said to when he was talking all that, he said to. The, the powers that be at that time, and they say, wait, what? Oh, no. All this bartering and the trading and no, no, no. Let's get some banks over there. Let's get these banks over there so we can be able to control how they think, what they do, and everything like that. So, we so got 1913 be- happened. Sorry about that. 1911, 1912, 1913 happened. That's, the, the, all you read, the creature of the Jekyll Island. Mm-hmm. The creature, the creature from Jekyll Island, that was the demise of us. Well, put it this way, the United States, because then it became a corporation. Mm-hmm. And then all the Federal Reserves and the IRA and all that stuff. Emerged from that. And then now the mindset is totally different of how do we do certain things. That's the main thing. How do we do it? I mean, we can talk all day and philosophize, yeah. yeah. but I mean... People at the end of this are going to be saying to themselves, oh, that was nice. You know, we had Catino, we had this guy here that can, you know, manage $20 billion of um, market-traded notes and all. Fine. But at the end of the day, when they finish watching this, they're going to say, I'm still the same point I was in. Right? Mm-hmm. So the thing That's is... It's unfortunate, but true. It's unfortunate, so it's up to us to teach them. But you know another reason, too, before you go, and I want you to know, because I, I know you got a hard stop, I think what we, if, if they take anything from what we were speaking about, because this is not just one episode kind of thing. This is more of a, oh, yeah. you have to, uh, you know. You have um, to expound on expound, it. Yeah, exactly. Expound on it. But I think in anything, just like in basketball, man, I, I know people come to me, how do I be a pro? And I'm like, are you willing to, right, spend the time, right? So you have to spend the time in finance. You have to really understand exactly what it is and not expand like the spending part. I'm talking about the back office part, the part he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Because when you first, when you start to understand that, you know how to get it back. You know where it's coming. You know, you know, it's like playing the game of basketball. Yeah. Are you studying film? Are you working on your jumper? Are you working on, okay, this team, I may not get pressured, you know, a full court press for uh, two months. But that don't mean I'm not working on just in case that happens. Just in case that happens. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's so much work in it that I think people get, the, not just our community, people in general. That's why there's only a certain percentage that control it mm-hmm. because you get discouraged. It's so much going on. There's so much information. I'm finding this out almost 50 years old, certain stuff, mm-hmm. where when I was getting 10, 20, I could have been setting up corporations and this, that, whatever, and then I was just borrowing against the, I was just so many, how they do. And you can't be mad at it. Yeah. You got to, you all right, this is how you play. Just like he said, in basketball and football, you come with a tennis racket, you're in trouble. You're just disqualified. Yeah. So if you can learn how to play the finance, because you can't beat them. So if you play the, the rule of finance, yeah. play the rule of finance, yeah. well, you, you will succeed. You, yeah. you beat them by becoming successful. Successful. Success is being able to take care of your family. Right. Success is leaving having that picture of you over the fireplace, and they say, who's that? Well, that's Grandpa Johnson. He started all this. Mm. Right? That's success. Generation wealth. That's success. Yeah. So how do you achieve that? The rules is there's is there's seed money. You got to have some seed money. Mm-hmm. Then there's foundation capital. You got to have a proper structure. And then there's, then there's what they call springboard funding. Mm-hmm. The bank has more money. The bank is a lending institution, not a hold your money institution. Mm. That's the problem people are having. They go in on Friday put all their money in, and then somebody like me come in and say, uh, come here, I want, I want to ask you something. Yes, Mr. Whitehead. They laugh because they know I'm going to do it. I says, I want all the money, some of the money that those people put in from working on Friday, I want some of that money 
so I can build a big corporation so I can hire them and pay them with their own money. Can I do that? <laughs> yeah. They say, yes, Mr. White, that's okay. I'll be right over here. Okay. And that's, that's what gang. happens. So what happens is now, how do you get the seed money? Yeah. The seed money is you have to separate yourself from the control of, 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 of them. Mm -hmm. You know, them, however you want to put it, right? And how you you want to do it? Do it the same way they did it. They built a corporation. A corp is a person. So it's a a piece of paper. They made a corporation, a person. So you are the. It is your straw man. So now you take that straw man, build it up, walk in the bank and say, Leroy would like some money. They say, okay. Does Leroy have this, this, and this, and this? And we just gotta learn what this, this, and this, and this. Mm -hmm. You're walking with red pants, red socks, and red jacket, you get the money. You're walking with red socks, red pants, blue jacket, you don't get the money. And nobody's teaching us from banking, because I taught a lot of these people, mm -hmm. you know, what to do. You take that corporation, you go in one, two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000, now you got some seed money. Mm -hmm. Now you do non-performance income, just like they did. They came here to not perform unless we like what we're doing. So we get that one, two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. Then we go to the next level. There's levels to this. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have five hundred thousand dollars or more, then you go to private equity. But you got to have a C corp to do that. So you get your. Everybody says, "I got my LLC. I got my LLC. LLC is what it says. It's limited liability. So if you want to go to the top, how are you going to do that? Being limited, mm. right? But they, but people are learning today because the age of information. So at least they have the nerve to know I need a corporation at least. Mm -hmm. But that's for protection. Yeah. So in closing, uh, you go and get your seed money. You take your seed capital, get the corporation, build it right. You walk in and say, hey, uh, Willie would like some money. So okay, to give Willie some money. If you mess up, you're dead in the water. Mm -hmm. Seven years, bad luck. <laughs> right? If Willie mess up, it's like Biden. Biden says, hey, we're going to sue you. You're going to go into jail. You're going to sue you because you bombed such a... I didn't do that. United States of America did that. Wow. Well, that's what you're going to have to do. So you take Stop your court and you say, listen, uh, corp done messed up. This corp's not getting any more money from this bank. Oh, I'm sorry. And you walk out. You still take the corp and say, buy Leroy and pull Willie out your car. And walk back in with Willie. Because Willie's another individual you what control. What Trump do. I, I'm, Willie's another individual <laughs> that you control. And you can do this all day long. Because you have to not. I, I love the people that are teaching today. Because they're a starter pistol. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand there's more to it. You got to get the money. Pro, structure it. And then protect your money. It's easy to get harder to hold. Mm -hmm. So now you got your hole in court. Now, if the holding corp, then you go in. Now you have to protect people from those heavy sharks that's going to come. Somebody going to come for some of your money. Then the, what's the last thing? You got to be able to get out of that situation. So that's called a golden parachute. Now, this is basic finance structure, but nobody's teaching us that. Mm -hmm. So you want to go and say, I'm going to get my seed money, get your corp, build it the right way, the seven structure. Then go in, say, I'm going to have a good fight go. Because that's what they want. This is not money's not oh, in, not Africa where you go with a handful a thing of money. You, you buy a house with credit. You buy yeah. a car with credit. Credit is dominant, right? This is a capitalistic society. Yeah. So now in capitalism, you use credit. So you walk in, you use credit. Don't let credit use you, hmm. right? So I now, get, yeah, I think we can. Now you when you walk in there, now you say, you say, I got my seed money. What about if you were a guy who had already has five, 10 trucks. You want, to, you want to grow. There's something called private equity. When you get a seed corporation, a C, not an S, not an LLC, a C corp, nobody orders the book. Nobody teaching us to, or to get the book. You go and order a book for $129 and you got the stamp like the President Obama and whoever, whatever president, and you got stock in it. Right, a private placement memorandum, take that out, transfer agent, and you can solicit money. The government says 504, 505, 506. You can raise $1 million with that. Just give them that paper. Investors give you their money. 505, 
you can do $5 million under law. 506, you can do unlimited. So why are we around looking for Section 8? Why are we looking for, you know, government cheese? Go and get your corp, set it up like the United States set it up, and go get your, go to fly and we'll go get you some real cheese. Cheese, the good cheese, right? Mm-hmm. Which the cheese? The is. good cheese. <laughs> the good cheese with the, the real cheese. cheese. That's a hard stop on the good cheese. Now, wait a minute the now. The good cheese. The last point is there's levels. So you get your seed money. I'm not talking about just the 50,000 credit card stacking or, right? I'm talking about there's levels. So now you go in, get your next level after the seed money, mm-hmm. and then you go private equity because you got a C, a C Corp. United States is a C Corp. Mm-hmm. Follow them. Now, after you get that, you got 10 trucks. Now you got 500 trucks, 1,000 trucks. Now you can go to take your company public because now everybody can invest in you around the whole damn world. Why not? Because nobody's teaching you. You can get a, a shell, not a shelf, a shell that's already publicly traded. Put that inside your corporation that you, your shelf corp, because the banks don't deal with rookies, Mm-hmm. put that in there, reverse merger, you publicly trade it. Just like Google. And everybody around the world is going to invest in you. There's places called boiler rooms and boutiques yeah, yeah. that give you money so you can grow because they want to do non-performance. They have money. They say, here, I give you some money, you grow, and then give me some. If you go public, the stock rises 10 times the amount. And then they take their money out double and it goes down to normal. So who's losing? Yeah. Nobody. So we got to know there's levels to this, right? You just explained about maybe 15 levels over <laughs> the information that's circulating now. Want to um, close on that note. Want to thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because this was long awaited. And definitely will have to be a sequel to this because I think there's other areas we need to explore based on the information you've given us so that we can kind of, you know, dissect yeah. you know the, the 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 merit in all of this so well what we've done is we've laid down the fa- the foundation, foundation. Yeah, the guys yeah. that you've the guys that you've uh, uh talked about earlier they laid the foundation for me yeah so hands off to them yeah, yeah. because yeah. they were brave enough to come out and say hey y'all guess what you got to get your credit together you yeah. and, and, and they've ignited a fire under this entire generation like being that they're young these young kids even with playing. some of the, the the you know the aviance and all of that is still valuable information for people to understand and once again I want to thank you for coming on the show thanks for having us next man. time we Cat. come next time we come we're going we're going to go into how we do it yeah yeah that, that that's beautiful that. so yeah it's your brother Amir Another great episode of the Perspective Podcast. My special guest, Derek Whitehead, you know what I'm saying? Financial uh, coach. And he's done some amazing things his 30 year career in the financial space. Legend in his own right. Anybody that ever picked up a pill between the time of 1998 to 2008, they know Cat's a walking bucket. You know what I'm saying? Catino Mobley. And, um, Stay tuned, like, share, but more importantly, subscribe. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Barakul Alfi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nah, bismillah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. It's your brother Amir. And that was an amazing episode of the Perspective Podcast with my special guests, Derek Whitehead and Katino Mobley. We talked about a lot of things. But more importantly, I just want to give my disclaimer on a lot of the information that was given from Derek, you know, in his extensive career in the financial space. As I mentioned, he's managed over $20 billion in portfolios. He's raised funds for actors, politicians, entertainers, you name it. But the one thing I want to be able to establish as a disclaimer for myself being Muslim that is important to understand as Muslims, we don't deal in interest. So a lot of this information that revolves around the banking system, it all entails some level of interest involved. So just as a disclaimer, I just want to be clear that as a Muslim, I don't do, I don't deal in any interest. I'm not someone that promotes 
you know, dealings with interest. But this show is called The Perspective for the reason of understanding that these things exist and having the education and understanding of what they entail is very important for my viewers and for my listeners. But in no way, shape, or form do I deal in any interest that deals with anything dealing with the banking system. But it's important to understand that he mentioned some very, very pinnacle things just to peel back a few layers or veils that may be over the eyes and ears of many people who reside in the United States of America and not understanding what it entails to live in a capitalist society and how to survive and in some cases thrive. So, Barakallahu feek, Jazakallah khair, Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.